Hello, and welcome, everybody. I'm Shelley Malott from Cast and Crew and CAPS Marketing. Thank you for joining us today for the first installment of our CAPS webinar series, Creating the Digital Production Office, Digital Onboarding and Time Cards with ETC. Let me introduce our panelists today. Todd Dyer, Vice President of Sales, Venues, Music Tours, and Live Events. Jody Stiegel, Vice President of Sales. Randy Ortiz, Senior Product Support Analyst, and Alexis Klein, Customer Success Manager. They will be guiding you through a deep dive into onboarding and time cards with ETC and how they can help you manage the new digital production office. Before I hand off to our panelists, some quick housekeeping. If you do have any questions during the presentation, kindly type them into the Q&A box. We will be addressing your questions as we go. We will also be providing a video recording to all who registered, so be sure to look for that link in your email after the webinar. So without further ado, Todd, Jody, Randy, and Alexis. Thank you, Shelley. Our objective today is to deliver to all of you a rather in-depth overview of ETC. The product's capabilities as it serves as a resource to a wide variety of productions ranging from features, television and commercials, to live events, entertainment tours, and production companies supporting all of it. ETC com contains three primary components to the system. You may use one or all of the components that make most sense to you and the productions that you support. Employ employee onboarding allows crews to digitally complete I-9, W-4, direct deposit, and other documents digitally in the cloud. Timekeeping and hour day rate submissions, where you can have crew members, times, days, and hours completed and managed within the system. And my cast and crew employee portal is a component which immediately becomes available to any employee once they are added as a payee in our system. Here they can manage contact information, withholding amounts, as well as access pay stubs and W-2s. As our world begins to open up and our industry begins to rethink best practices on how we all resume business in a post-COVID world, CAPS Payroll and Cast and Crew have been working hard to serve as valued partner by way of the resources we deliver to our clients. We have found ourselves in a touch-free environment in payroll, workforce management, and the tools we all work with are no exception. With that, I turn it over to Mr. Randy Ortiz. Thank you, Todd. Uh, so as Todd mentioned um, before, we're actually gonna go over a few components within ETC. Um, let me just scroll over to the next screen. So um, ETC simply stands for Electronic Time Card System. When an admin is added to ETC, they are sent uh, a welcome email that basically has a security link for them to log in with. And once they click on that welcome email, they will um, just uh, be required to change their password so that way they can uh, continue to log into the system. Currently, what we're looking at here is called the administrative dashboard, which you'll see here at the top right. On the far right, you'll notice where it says client admin. Uh, that's the current user level that I'm currently logged in as. So client admin uh, is known as the highest user level within the system. You can view a client administrator as someone who um, is able to create all future projects under the production company that uh, they are assigned to within ETC. On the far left-hand side where it says test commercials, you can look at this as even the, the name of your own production company. So instead of test commercials, that would be the name of your production company there. Um, if I were logged in here and I click on the checkbox next to the name of the production company, what that would do is that would uh, allow me to view all of the projects um, that I have associated with that um, test uh, commercials entity or, or production company that I'm assigned to. So we're seeing there down at the bottom, uh, these are all the, the productions or the, the projects that I have available to me that I've already created. And then on top of that, um, towards uh, above above the projects grid, I have a what's called a metrics grid. So the metrics grid, you'll notice that it's actually highlighting a bit of information for me. Uh, and it gives me a little overview as to what I have going on throughout um, you know, my all the projects that I have down below. So if I want to log in and I want to just verify I-9s right from, from the start of the dashboard, instead of having to navigate to the projects tier, I can just do some of the administ administrative functions that I like to write from the dashboard as opposed to having to navigate through the system. So with that said, um, before we even continue, um, I know we also have our Q&A and our, and our chat queued up as well. Uh, periodically, I will uh, just pause so we can take some questions uh, from, uh, from the Q&A and the chat. 
Um, but we'll go ahead and if I were to click on the name of the project here, this will bring us into uh, the project itself. So the first thing that we're seeing, obviously we're looking at the project. Uh, above at the very top, we see uh, the name of the project, which I simply named ETC Timekeeping Project. Um, and then just below that, we have the project locations. So the project locations, the reason why I point that out is because the project locations are pretty important within regards to the ETC uh, timekeeping system. It's what determines what kind of uh, documentation uh, is assigned to the employees within uh, the ETC program. So you'll notice here down uh, at the employee grid, we have a few employees that are showing. Uh, and then the employee docs are also showing with either uh, red lettering or black lettering, simply signifying the status of their onboarding process. So red lettering simply means that their documents are incomplete. Uh, if it shows in black, uh, such as that employee's I-9 that we're looking at here, then that I-9 uh, was completed by the employee and now is showing for the admin to verify under the unverified documents column there. All right. Um, so I mentioned the, um, the status symbols in regards to what that means as far as the onboarding goes. Um, there are different ways that you can actually add employees to ETC. Uh, you can add an employee individually just by clicking on where it says set up employee here. And then you also have the option to add an employee or add multiple employees, I should say, using the bulk employee setup button, which I'm highlighting here. Um, before we continue on with the rest of the employee setup, which I, I want to go into next, um, Alexis, do we have any questions within the Q&A based on what we've just spoke about? We do. Um, so Kathy has a great question. Um, she would like to know, does the zip code related to the production company location or is it where people are working remotely? So it would be where the uh, employee is working. So you'd want to have those uh, locations set uh, before you start adding employees to the project, um, you can simply click on where it says set up a location here, and then you can add additional locations other than the location which we're currently seeing here, which is the default location when we created the project. Thank you. Um, we also have someone who would uh, choose to remain anonymous, and they're wondering if they can create projects with both union and also non-union employees. Correct. Yeah, that, that's that's not a problem. I mean, you can create uh, projects that have union and non-union employees. That's 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 not an issue at all. Lovely. Um, Adrian is actually asking about how we set up jobs initially. Uh, in commercials, it is the prod super or someone from the head of production. Uh, repeat that first part one more time. I'm sorry. Sure. So who sets up the project initially? Probably so someone from the client admin. Correct, yeah. So the, the initial uh, person that would set up the uh, project is the client admin, which we're currently showing here. Um, there are other users that can uh, access ETC. Obviously, the employee is one of those um, that would be assigned to the project. Uh, but the other user in terms of administrative roles would be the project admin. So a project admin um, is someone that would get assigned by the client administrator, uh, and then they would be assigned to one specific project as opposed to, uh, you know, having the same kind of access as a client admin. So the client admin really um, dictates what kind of um, access they have for the project administrator. Fantastic. I think maybe we, we can take one or two more. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, Nina is asking, are crew already in your system easily called up for a list on a project so we don't have to input everything for them again? Uh, are they called up on a list? Is that, is, that was, is that part of the question? Sure. I think this uh, question actually speaks to how do we get them from one project to the next? Okay, so in, in regards to copying over employees, there's a few different ways that you can go about it. Uh, so it's not showing here, but just below the employee grid, there's something called a bulk upload. So I can actually uh, download uh, a list of all the employees that I have, including all of their details. And then I can use that information and copy it over onto a template file for the new project. And then I can bulk upload those employees there. There is another way that I can actually copy over employees. You'll see here, uh, it says copy employees from other projects. I can simply search for uh, the name of the project that I have there. And then I can copy from that project over onto the, the new project that I want, as long as those locations are the same because of the, uh, the way that ETC assigns uh, the onboarding documents. 
Lovely. And I believe this will be our last question for this section. Um, someone who chooses to remain anonymous is asking, <laughs> as an employee and admin, do you need separate logins? Um, so it's, it's not necessary that you do. It's not like a requirement uh, or something that we, you know, enforce or anything like that. I do think it, sometimes it can uh, make it a little easier uh, for the user. You know, if they want to submit their personal time cards, they can, you know, be set up with their personal email. Um, but either or they can, they can do either or it's, 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 there's, that's not like a, something that's set in stone. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue forward with uh, the employee setup. Um, and then, you know, if there are any other questions, we'll actually get to, we have a Q&A section towards the very end where we'll, we'll take uh, additional questions as well, even if it's in regards to things that we spoke about. So I'll move right along to the employee setup. Um, here is where, if I were to click on where it says setup employee, you'll notice it says setup employee in the background. If I were to click on that button, it'll drop down this menu for me. And what I can do is search for the employee based on the email that we are currently seeing. So if this uh, person's email or some is someone that has already been registered in CAPCTC before, you'll notice that the first and last name has, will pre-populate just the way that we're seeing as well. So what this tells me is that they um, have already been registered and they may have already been paid by us before. And then the only thing I have left to do is simply uh, input the fields that are showing uh, with that red asterisk, meaning those are the re required fields. So here I just have that start date um, as the other required field for me. So as the admin, I would just enter that information and then I can click on where it says next so we can continue forward as well. So, and then as soon as I do that, you'll see that uh, I'm brought to an area where it's asking me what location I want to assign to this particular employee. So. Uh, we have that default location, which is that California LA location uh, when the project was first created. Let's say, for instance, if I wanted to add uh, an additional location, uh, I can add an additional location where it says new location here. But let's say that this location, this California location was not one that they actually worked. I would click on where it says uh, new location there, uh, add that location, and then I would see it within that same menu. And then I can deselect that California Los Angeles location. All right, so, um, and we'll continue forward with that setup process. Uh, this is basically just highlighting some of the things that I just mentioned. Uh, and this, you know, ensuring that, you know, if you're adding those uh, new locations, it basically just ensures that the documentation that is added to the employee is the correct documentation, whether it be, you know, state uh, forms or any other forms that need to be uh, assigned to the employee. All right, so um, moving right along into, this is actually the last part of the, um, of the employee setup. Um, this is where I would start to search for the occupation or job title that I would like. You'll see here within this field, um, right below where it says occupation, I can actually just type in the title or the job title that I want. And I simply chose the uh, production assistant or PA, simply it's, it's pretty a common uh, job title here, but we have plenty of um, job titles or occupations you can choose from within that drop down. If there isn't one that uh, you would like to see, you can always have additional job titles titles uh, added uh, within these fields as well. Uh, and then anything else that is showing with that red asterisk are simply just required fields. Um, th that's just information that uh, me as an administrator, I I'd have to enter before I can proceed. Um, at this point, I would click on where it says next so we can, uh, can continue forward. And then uh, an employee or the employee who is currently being set up by the admin would uh, get a welcome email. So that way they can log in and start the onboarding process on their end. Um, before we go into uh, the employee side and, and view like what that uh, aspect looks like, Alexis, do we have any questions based on the employee setup or anything like that from, from the previous slides? Yes, actually. Um, so we actually have someone that is asking, does the employee docs have to be uploaded for each project if the employee is a repeat hire? So no, that's, if the employee is, or once the employee is first uh, onboarded uh, for that production company, they do not have to repeat the same document. So, you know, if they complete their I-9, uh, that I-9, uh, they do not have to complete again. Same thing with the W-4. The only documents that they would have to complete are project uh, specific forms. And those are forms usually like uh, a WTPA form or Wage Theft Protection Act form, or even a state withholding form. Um, if it applies in regards to the location that they're currently assigned to. Thank you. Um, we also have someone asked, 
Can you mass import employee info of employees used in the last six to 12 months if we've used CAPS before, but not ETC? So if this, so this is someone, I'm assuming this is someone who's already been paid uh, before as well. So with ETC, they would still need to do their I-9 uh, at least once on ETC before they can actually, um, you know, before they aren't required to have to complete it again. Um, once they have that initial uh, ETC onboarding, even if they've been paid before in the past, then they won't have to complete it again with an ETC. Thank you. Adrian uh, is asking, is the pay rate hourly or if union, is it 10 hour or whatever the union regulations are? So in regards to like pay rates and things like that, normally I would usually uh, defer to the assigned uh, paymaster to confirm things like that. Um, yeah, that, that's, that would be more of a, of a payroll question than it is uh, more of a technical uh, question uh, for the platform. Lovely. Um, Ali is wondering if CAPS requires a WTPA form. Uh, she's, she's asking if, it, if the WTPA form is required. That is correct. Uh, so it depends on the location. So there are certain locations that do require the WTPA form. New York requires a WTPA form no matter, you know, where the location is within New York. Uh, there are other locations such as California, if it's a uh, Los Angeles location and it's also non-union. Uh, Washington, uh, D.C. is another location that does require the WTPA form, as well as uh, Seattle, Washington. So those are the four areas uh, that would require the WTPA form. And those are things that uh, if you're adding the, the employee with that location, then you will see the, the um, the option to actually trigger that form as well. All right, I think we can take maybe one more, Alexis, if you have anything. Absolutely. So Andrew is hoping that we could um, circle back around to the I-9 and W-4 conversation. Okay. Um, do they have to fill it out per company? Correct, yeah. So it, it would have to be per production company because essentially we can't have another production company, you know, verify an I-9 for, you know, for someone else. Uh, it would be per production uh, company and not necessarily per project. Thank you. Do we have time for one more or are we moving on? Um, let's see. I think, I, th I think we, well, well, let's do this. We'll, uh, we'll continue on to the next slide and we'll actually save it to the Q&A section because we'll have time towards the end uh, where we can ask, uh, actually answer more of those questions too. And just so you guys are aware, we do have um, support staff who are also answering questions within the chat. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're able to, to see, but there may be uh, some of your questions that may already have been answered as well within the chat too. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue forward. Uh, I'm just gonna go over to the next slide. This is the uh, employee's I-9, which is pretty straightforward. You know, once the employee logs in uh, and they, after they change their password and they're redirected to the ETC uh, platform, they'll be brought to their I-9. Uh, and then you'll see here in section one, it highlights, you know, what fields are required for them to complete. Uh, their last name, you know, first name, things like that are obviously required and shown within the, uh, the red asterisks there. Uh, and then at the very bottom of the form, uh, we have the, um, the penalties of perjury checkbox where they would just simply acknowledge, you know, that the information that they input on their end is true and accurate. So I've also input the employee's name. I simply named this employee or test user employee name. And that's perfectly fine. The system um, will allow you know, that to be entered. It's, it's not case sensitive. So they can en enter it in all uppercase or lowercase, as long as it matches the name that they input uh, at the very top of the form, uh, then that's perfectly fine. And um, you'll see that simply highlights what I just mentioned there as well. Uh, and then after the employee clicks on I agree, sign document and save here at the bottom, uh, they'll be brought into uh, their My Forms page, which is a, a section within their account. And they'll see that a, the ETC will ask them if they want to download a copy for their own record. So if the employee happens to click on yes and they want to download a copy, that copy will remain on their device that they're, they're working from. Uh, that way they have it you know, for their own records at a later point as well. All right, so let's say for instance, this employee has already, uh, you know, com they completed their I-9, they've done the rest of their, their forms as well. Um, if we continue forward, what we would see is actually the time card um, section here at the top. So you'll notice it says my time cards here on the top left. And my time cards would just bring them to their current week's time card. They would see uh, if they're on a desktop, 
they would see the same view that you're uh, looking at on the left. They would be able to enter their times uh, as well within those uh, columns there. And then just above the time card is a little hint as to what that format or that time format should be. So right now it says all time entries must be in military quarters format. And it also gives an example as to what that format looks like. Um, that format is not something that's set in stone. So that can be changed by the administrator, whether you prefer you know, standard time, whether you prefer uh, military tenths, that can uh, easily be changed as well. On the far right hand side, we're also seeing uh, what that mobile view or that the tablet view would look like as well. It's just a truncated version of the desktop view that we're seeing. Obviously, since some of, uh, some of your employees may uh, also be uh, working on the go, you know, it's important that they can also be able to submit on their, their uh, mobile device as well. All right, and that will uh, bring us over to uh, the employee's profile. Um, so in CAPS ETC platform, there is a My Profile section here, which you'll see here at the very top. Um, if they want to submit direct deposit, there's also an option for them to submit direct deposit. Uh, here towards the middle, you'll see it says submit direct deposit. Um, and then they would start to um, upload uh, supporting documents where they can actually um, enter their information uh, that they want for the direct deposit account that they want on file. Before we actually go into that, because I will show you what that looks like, I also want to highlight uh, a couple of things uh, here as well. So down at the bottom is the notifications grid. So let's say for instance, an employee wants to be notified when they're getting paid or you know when a time card has been approved. The employee can also set up those notifications on their end in the My Profile section. They would simply click on where it says edit here on the far right, and it gives them the option to choose um, how frequently they want to be notified. So whether it be daily, whether it's just at the time of the occurrence, uh, they can be notified of those things as well. All right, so um, with that said, let's go into the direct deposit. And so this is the, the uh, screen that I was uh, referring to before. Uh, so they would simply click on where it says add documents there. They would upload uh, a supporting document for the information that they want to enter for their account. Uh, and that supporting document is simply used so that we can uh, compare the information that they input uh, compared to you know, their, an actual statement that they have with that information on it. Um, and once they upload that document, you'll see that it'll bring them to this page here. And then here is where they can actually enter their account information. And then once they start to enter that account info, um, you know, they would just click on where it says submit direct deposit request down at the bottom. And then that, in, that direct deposit uh, account is instantaneous. It automatically goes through. Um, there's no, you know, after that, going forward, they'll be paid through direct deposit as opposed to uh, having a check mailed out to them as well. Um, before um, we proceed, I just want to take any other questions. Alexis, if you have any questions um, from the Q&A or the chat, and then uh, I'll hand it off. Oh, yeah, we have a couple of questions. First is from Joe, um, and his question is about time cards. Is there any way to use a 10-hour day? For photo production, we work on 10-hour days. The hour input is always a problem it's not the same as film hours. Um, so it, it depends on how, um, you know, what that agreement was with the employee. So normally on something like this, normally I would actually defer to uh, a payroll coordinator because um, anything with rates and things like that, I would always advise that we have uh, coordinators who you can speak with regards to that. But normally what I would recommend if this was someone who, um, you know, you're, you're, if you're paying it, you know, it depends on how you want to pay them. So if it's an hourly or if it's a, it's a daily rate, um, you may want to convert that daily rate into an hourly rate and then you can pay them and set them up that way. We do allow for day rates and flat rates to be used as well, but this is meant to be used for employees who are exempt from overtime. So for someone like that who is exempt from overtime, instead of them entering their hours, they would simply uh, click on a checkbox that says day worked within their time card instead. Lovely. So Kathy is asking if someone is already set up for direct deposit, um, will that carry over automatically to the new system? Um, so anytime that they set up a direct deposit, uh, that direct deposit account that they set up on their end will be active for the remainder of when, you know, for any projects that they're working with caps going forward. So they never have to set it up 
again, if they're working on a different project or a different job, uh, they don't have to, to recreate it or, or, or set it up uh, again in the future. Um, and actually, why don't we continue forward? And what I'll do is uh, I'll save any other questions for our, our, our final Q&A chat towards the end. And I'll actually pass it on to Jody, uh, Jody Siegel. Jody, you want to take it away? Sure. Thanks, Randy. That was a great job and we so appreciate it. Thank so you. you guys, for the next steps, we suggest that you contact a sales professional at CAPS Payroll to set up a personalized demo of ETC. It's so much better when we can do one-on-one -on -one and really walk through the screens and take, take our time with it. Um, we're now going to take a few questions, some Q&A, and see, answer some questions. And you can always reach us at etcsales at capspayroll.com, and we'll get back to you and set up demos right away. Thank you. As Jody said, we are now open for questions. If you could kindly click on the Q&A button in the bottom of your Zoom screen to open the box and type in your questions, we'll answer as many as we can in the time we have. But remember, we welcome you to contact us directly by emailing etcsales at capspayroll.com. Lovely. Um, we actually have a few different questions. So Fritz would actually like to know, uh, Media Services is touting TIM, Time is Money, as their onboarding service, which is supposed to be payroll company agnostic. Do you accept TIM documents? One thing that TIM does is allow documents like NDAs to be uploaded. Does ETC support custom PDFs? Um, so we do allow for custom documentation to be um, deployed or added into the system as well. Um, what we usually ask is that um, you would provide us a copy of what that document would look like um, because there is a turnaround time for that that documentation to be implemented into the system. So we usually ask uh, you know for us or for you to give us a heads up um, you know in advance before you'd like that to, to ha um, be, uh, added into the system so that way we can um, go through like testing of the of the uh, of the document and just make sure that it matches the requirements that uh, that you're you're expecting it to match. And I'll answer some of that. Um, to that note, I think it was Fritz. Um, Tim is a standalone product. ETC is not. So ETC is used with our in conjunction with our payroll service. Awesome, Alexis. Do you want to grab a, a few more questions? Absolutely, I would. Um, so Jared is asking, if we use ETC for a project, can a crew member also use a paper time card if they refuse to use ETC? Yeah, so pa paper time cards is something that, um, as far as I know, is not something that's going away. Um, that's always an option for you to use. Um, you can always submit physical time cards, you know, uh, if you just so happen to have an employee who does not want to use ETC, um, you know, that, that's, that option will never go away. Thank you. Um, we also have someone asking, are employees self-reporting their hours? How difficult is it to go back and change or correct employees self-reported hours? So it's pretty, I would say it's pretty easy. There is, there is a workflow um, that is involved, um, but it's not too complex. Um, you know, what would happen is, let's say for instance, an employee uh, submits a time card over to you. Um, it would go into a section within the project simply called unclaimed time cards. And in that unclaimed time card section, you'll see all the time cards that have been submitted to you by your employees. So let's say for instance, you uh, view the time card and some of those hours are not accurate or correct. You can make the edits onto the time card and then you can reject the time card back to the employee. You also have the option to actually submit um, the time card over to the employee first. So that way, you know, the times are already on there for the employee. All they have to do is actually resubmit it back to you as the administrator. Thank you. Holland is asking, what impact does ETC have on the need for CAPS pay? Does this program include the union contract and state fed law oversight that CAPS pay has? Does this negate the need for CAPS pay? So ETC is, is a, it's a, more, a way more robust system uh, than CAPS pay. And, and, and I say that because there's a lot 
of other things that you can do in ETC as opposed to what you can do in CapsPay. Although I will say that CapsPay in terms of um, in terms of the calculations and everything, um, ETC piggybacks off of CapsPay in terms of the time card calculations. So um, you know when it comes to calculating time cards, that functionality is uh, deriving from CapsPay. But as far as like the onboarding and everything like that in terms of the documents that are signed, that's all happening within ETC. So they work in tandem with each other. Um, you know, I, I won't say one is necessarily better than the other, but they, they do work in tandem uh, with each other. Um, and it really depends on, you know, what it is that you're looking for. Lovely. Adrian is asking if there's a number the crew can call if they need to be walked through the process at CAPS so that her crew um, does not have to call her. All right. So, and, and this is something, a great question, uh, first and foremost. This is something that I, even during demos and trainings that I, I give as well, I always recommend admins uh, refer their employees to us. It's really our job. It's really the reason that I uh, am in this role is to help those employees with uh, any technical uh, support that they may need. Um, we do have a dedicated line that you can reach our support members for further assistance. I would recommend that you have those employees um, just go to us either within that uh, support line number or even through the support email as well. And we'll be happy to, to answer any questions or walk them through with anything that they need. Thank you. Michael is asking, what are the costs for using ETC if we are already using CAPS as our payroll service? I'll answer that one, Randy. Yeah. Um, so there is no additional cost for ETC if you are a payroll client currently working with us. That is lovely. Uh, we also have another question here from someone who would prefer to remain anonymous. If each crew member is entering their time card information, will the production team still be able to group weeks in batches? Uh, so as soon as, as soon as an employee is um, added onto the system, they can start, as, as long as that I-9 has been completed, they can start, you know, submitting time cards as well. And even you as an administrator, you can still, you know, start creating batches and, and kind of getting prepared for it as well. There's no restrictions in terms of that. The only thing, the only thing um, that you would need to do in order to even calculate a time card is simply approve of the I-9 first before you can uh, calculate the time card. But all of the preparation in terms of, you know, creating the batch, naming the batch uh, and things like that, and just moving time cards into those batches, which really just takes, you know, um, not even a minute to do, uh, you can definitely do that beforehand as well. Lovely. Daisy would like to know, is there a mobile phone app or are they just access it via the web browser on their phone? So there's no mobile phone app. They would just strictly be through the web browser on their phone. Uh, yeah, they, it's just straight through the, the web browser that, that they have on their phone. There's, there's no app uh, for it. Fantastic. Um, when we actually have a question about um, verifications of I-9 and W-4s. Okay. Once it's completed, those two documents, who verifies those? So um, there's the client admin, which we mentioned in the beginning, uh, but the other user, which I kind of lightly touched on as well, is that project administrator. The project administrator I mentioned in the, be in the beginning uh, would be assigned by the client admin to a specific job that they want them to oversee. Uh, so either of those users have the ability to actually verify the I-9 as well as other documentation, either the client admin or the project administrator or PM um, or the, the, the project uh, manager. Lovely. Jocelyn is asking, can we set up multiple project admins for a specific project? Absolutely. So you can set up multiple project uh, administrators as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, as well. There is no um, limit as to how many uh, administrators that you can add or anything like that. Um, sometimes I know some, some clients uh, find it easier to have multiple uh, admins to oversee, um, you know, several jobs. Um, it's really, it's really up to you as the, as the client administrator. Um, you know, it really depends on what, what you feel comfortable uh, with as well. Thank you. And I think this is going to be our last question for the day. Okay. Uh, and the question is, are you going to send us a follow-up email of all of the reference emails and numbers to get help? Uh, is that, is, I'm assuming, is that for technical support or I'm not sure if that's uh, for sales? Um, I believe this is a question. Um, everything that we've gone over today, probably like a link that 
will incorporate this webinar and then a yeah. way to how to get a hold of us. Yeah, I know, I know we are actually recording the webinar, so I know that's actually going out to the attendees as well. Um, Todd or Jody, I'm not sure if yep. you want to chime in on that. Um, you can always reach out to someone in sales and we'll get you the information that you need. And these rec this recorded demo will be sent to um, the attendees this afternoon or this week, let's just say. Does that answer it? Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> so, looks like I was wrong. Apologies. Uh, that was a technical answer, what they were looking for. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Um, and uh, let's do this. We'll take one more question. Yeah, we can, we can one take more one more. Question. Yeah, Alexis, one more, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, can you set different permission levels for different users in your company, like coordinators and what they can see and approve versus line producers, admins with complete full access? Thank yep. you, Josh. So, yeah, great question. So um, you can set the um, the user level access uh, within uh, ETC. For someone, let's say, for instance, I'm a client administrator and I uh, assign a project admin to one specific job, I can determine what kind of uh, role that they that I want them to have. So I can give them full admin access, I can make them uh, a time approver only, which is someone who simply approves the times that uh, employees input on their on their time card. Um, I can also create what's called departments and I can also uh, restrict them to the one particular department or even to multiple departments that I want them to have in the system. Uh, so that way they're not uh, overseeing other administrators, um, you know, employees within the job. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. I just want to say one last thing. Um, yeah, for references and things like that, you can go to our website and click on ETC and all of our products and see them there. And again, if you would like a personal demo, um, feel free to call your salesperson and we're happy to set it up for you guys. And thank you, everyone. That is the end of our webinar. A big thanks to Todd, Jody, Randy, and Alexis for that look into how we can manage today's digital production office. If you have further questions regarding CAPS products and services, we welcome you to contact us directly by emailing etcsales at capspayroll.com. And yes, we will be sending you a link later today so that you can watch the webinar again at your convenience. Please watch your inbox for invitations to future webinars in the Digital Production Office series. We hope to see you there. And until then, stay safe. Goodbye, everyone.